Chrissy's in an apartment flicking through magazines. Her phone rings. She answers. Hello? Hey. Huh? What does that mean? Oh, so I need to get a Grammy nomination by tomorrow or... The record company terminates my contract? Fuck. How the hell am I meant to get one on short notice? Uh, Julia, I am a PR disaster at the moment. There is no hope. What do you mean there's a chance? You want me to talk to Dwight Cole? Why? Huh? Okay. Can I think about it? Okay, God, okay. Okay, fine. Arrange the meeting and I'll be there. The front door opens. I walk in. Whew. Well, the paparazzi outside want your blood. So, what did you do this time? Chrissy hangs up the phone. Yeah. <laughs> I might have tweeted that Beyonce was fat in her latest Vogue photo shoot pictures. <laughs> anyway, I guess I'm probably trending on Twitter right now. You bet your ass you are. What's the matter? You don't usually care about the bad press you get. Hence, you don't have a PR team. No, you're mistaken. I have no PR team because no company wants to work with me. So, the bad publicity isn't the reason you're in a mood. What is it? Let me help. My record company wants to drop me. Damn. Tough week for you, Christy. I have been offered a solution by my crooked record label, though. Well, what is it? And are those the right words to describe a loyal company that's nurtured your striving career? My record company wants me to get a Grammy nomination by tomorrow. <laughs> what? Yeah, good luck with that. Stop being mean. I'm sorry, it's, it's not my intention, but no music association wants to be in business with you. You're a cancer. Uh, thanks. That's nice. I'm just pointing out that you'd have a better chance of climbing Mount Everest without an oxygen mask than you getting a nomination. It's like your words are chokeholds. Thanks for being so supportive. <sighs> I'm taking it your agent has a way in which you can get that nomination. Yeah, the kid Julia does. She always does. Come on, I'm sure it isn't that bad. What is it? Well, I'm not telling you. So that's your hint that it is that bad. Christy, why do I feel like whatever your agent has planned will put your reputation in peril? Uh, duh, because I just told you it will. Please don't do it. I'm pretty sure the ethics of what you want to do isn't right. Well, it really fucking isn't, but I have no choice. Hands are tied. I'm stuck. Christy gets up and exits. Christy walks into the living room dressed to the nines. She looks stunning. I sit on the couch in awe of her. What are you looking at? Oh, uh, uh nothing. It's just that you scrub up quite lovely. You look stunning. Yeah, well, I don't feel like it. Hmm. So, where am I taking you? Oh, you're not. I'm getting an Uber. Christy picks up her purse and goes towards the door. I reach to the door before she can turn the door handle. What are you up to, Christy? Nothing. Move out of my way, please. Who's the person you're meeting? I'm going on a date. Are you happy? Name, please. Ugh, why? I want to Google the person for security purposes. Look, I don't need you to do that. Christy, remember, my sole job is to protect you. If you're going out on a date, I need to make sure that you're... Not going to be in harm's way, especially from the person you're going on a date with. So, I'll ask again. Who's the man you're going out with? His name is Dwight Cole. The adjudicator for the Grammys. He's one of the few who decide who gets nominations for the Grammys. Happy? Why do you feel the need to hide that? 
Unless there's something dodgy going on behind the scenes you don't want me to know. So, what aren't you telling me? Nothing. Look, I need to go. I'm going to be late. Christy, I'm missing something. What is it? Please, just tell me. Or I'll be forced to tag along. Ugh, just leave me alone! Christy tries to reach for the door handle, but I stand my ground. You're not going anywhere until I get some answers, Christy. Start talking. Hey, fine. White Cole is an old perv. Happy? I'm sorry. What did you say? Nothing important. I must have blacked out. Um, need to get changed. It's not like you're gonna let me see Dwight now anyway. Yeah, but we still need to hash this out. Christy walks through her bedroom door. She enters and locks it. Then, she opens her bedroom window and climbs out of the window. There's a fire escape with stairs leading to the ground. Christy starts walking down the stairs. Chrissy's being led to her table by her waiter. She's in a lavishing-looking restaurant. Chrissy touches her ear as if someone is talking to her. She tries to put on a brave face. She reaches a table, and a gray-haired man in an expensive Armani suit stands up to greet her. He gives her a kiss and gestures her to sit. I know your reputation, Dwight. So whatever you've got planned for me, you can just forget it. I'm not interested. It's that simple. Dwight smiles. It's a sleazy smile. His eyes linger on Chrissy's breasts. Chrissy looks uncomfortable as spit comes out of Dwight's mouth. Chrissy walks out of her apartment elevator. She enters her living room to find me sitting down on her couch. She walks over. Go ahead. Tell me off for double-crossing you. I know you've been waiting to do it. I stay silent. Fine. I'll tell you what happened. I already know. What do you mean you know? What exactly do you know? I looked up Dwight Cole. He's got quite a reputation on him. Yeah, you could say that again. He's had thousands of complaints against him from women, but somehow, Me Too moments never struck him. This is either because he's smart or because women find him attractive. Uh, no, they don't. Think again. Let me guess. Dwight offered you the Grammy nomination in exchange for something salacious. Ding, ding, ding. Yes. You know there's no chance I'll ever let you accept that, right? Especially with that man? Any fool could have guessed that. So you turned down his offer? I said I'd think about it. Christy, you're smarter than this. Yeah, well, my career is all I have. You have so much more than that. But what do I have? Name it. Well, for starters, how about (laughs) self-respect? I said I once shat on Shania Twain's dress to stop her from wearing the same dress as me at the MTV Music Awards. Do you still think my dignity was in place? Christy, you have close family and friends who respect you and would never understand what you're about to do. Well, how would they find out? It's not like I speak to them. I'm talking about myself. Oh, you're my close friend? (laughs) Yeah, I'd never admit to that. You are super annoying. Christy, what you're about to do is monumental. Can I please just ask you to think about it just for the night? Why the night? It gives me time to develop an action plan to help you out of this bind. What, and you think you'll come up with a plan? You're not that smart. And what? You're the definition of smart right now? You're one funny gal when you want to be. I'll give you that. Ugh, fine. I'll start the clock. You have 12 hours from now to come up with a plan to help me get a Grammy nomination, or... Or you'll see Dwight again. Ah, I guess so. Pressure's on, my friend. Good frickin' luck. 
You're gonna need it. Christy walks towards her door. Thanks for kicking down my bedroom door. You're welcome. It was being sarcastic. You're still welcome. Christy walks into the living room. I'm standing in front of the whiteboard. There are several pictures on the board of women. The pictures look like they're from the 80s and 90s. There's information about the woman next to the images. Wow. You look like you didn't sleep a wink last night. What's going on? <sighs> I've been trying to help you with this whole Dwight thing. Oh. Uh, cool. But, um, you should know. Just let me finish. Okay. These women have all in the past dated Dwight. That my Aunt Becca? What's she doing on the wall? She used to be a singer. <laughs> when? And why has she never mentioned it to me? Um, uh, how on earth don't you know this already? I don't know. It must have slipped my mind. Uh, anyways, as I said, all these women have tales about Dwight. Chrissy walks up to the board, starts reading. Dwight groped Becca. 1988, backstage at the Grammys. My aunt report him? Yep, but the police wouldn't charge him. The rumor is that DC paid off the head of the police at the time, and you know what? <laughs> Wait a minute. Hang on. Are you saying Dwight's best friend is Jamie Spears? Britney's dad. You can't be serious. This can't be true. Rumor has it, Dwight was the one who convinced Jamie to pursue the disputed conservatorship. Christy keeps reading. God, he's groped dozens of women. He's a sleaze, Christy. Why did you do all this? I just want you to know what kind of man you're getting in business with. You did all this to protect me? Why? We were best friends once, Christy. <laughs> I still can't remember you. But what is that? It's like I've got dementia or something. <sighs> Look, do me a favor, read up on all of these cases and decide what you want to do. Then, I won't judge you if you decide to continue on with this. Really? Yes. Okay, good, because I'm about to meet Dwight. Christy walks off to her bedroom. We hope you're enjoying this episode of The Bodyguard. That Love Podcast has over 190 episodes out now. If you'd like to help us to continue making great love stories for you, please consider joining our Patreon page for a low monthly fee of $1. We also have this episode's script if you'd like to read it whilst listening to it. The link is in the show page. Every penny of your money will go into helping us make even better content for you, the audience, to enjoy. Thank you for your kindness and have a great day. I'm driving Christy. I'm quiet. Uh, you're quiet? I imagine you know why that is. Look, it'll be a quick in and out thing. I don't need the details. Look, you know... Chrissy searches for my name. Uh, Quinn? <sighs> right. Quinn. Quinn, you underestimate me. I doubt that, but thanks. Things will work out, okay? You're about to sleep with the man to get your name on a lousy letter, Christy. Like I told you, you underestimate me. The car pulls up near a hotel lobby. Just go ahead and do what you're about to do. Will you be here when I come back? You're my boss. It's not like I have a choice. Christy gets out of the car. She walks over to the driver's window and gestures to me to row down the window. I do. Hey, it'll be okay. I put on music in the car. Christy walks off frustrated.
Chrissy walks out of the hotel. Paparazzi furiously snaps photos of her as she walks over to the car. She gets in. A man shouts, Well done, Christy! Great job! I start the car and drive off. Why was that man congratulating you? Was he in the room with you and Dwight? Was he filming the action? Are you in a porn now? Ugh. That's it. I quit. You are so dumb. Why else would he be congratulating me, dumbass? I don't even want to know now. I'm... I'm driving you home and getting someone else to babysit you. I need a new job. I, uh, didn't sleep with Dwight. What? Yeah. I tricked you into believing I was going to sleep with Dwight. Oh, oh whoa, what? Uh, hang on. What's going on? Why would you feel the need to do that? First, just want to say was a sting operation. The whole thing with Dwight was a sting operation by the FBI. Jesus. Yeah, the FBI has been trying to nail Dwight for decades. And last week, they got in touch with my aunt and my agent. They wanted my help to bring down Dwight. He's been ramping up his abuses lately. And anyway, they wanted him dealt with as soon as possible. So they asked you to do what? Well, they asked me to wear a wire and film his operation so they could finally nail his ass. Uh, okay, well, hang on. So how far did you go with him? Not very far. Police caught him on camera slipping something into my drink on our last date. Apparently that was enough to nail him. Anyway, it happens Dwight's done that to a lot of women. Our meeting finally provided the evidence to prove it. So... What was the plan for today? Why did you meet Dwight again if you already had his ass on a platter? Police wanted me to be part of the arrest. EMZ paid me two million dollars to be front and center of the action so they could have the exclusive story. The story is going global. My reputation is back in business, baby! <laughs> wow, um, so what happens now? Well, the police took my statement, I've got my TMZ interview at home, and this mess is all wrapped up and cleared up. Poof. Thank God. I've got to say, I'm relieved. I pull over. So, admit it. You thought so little of me that you thought I'd sacrifice my body for an award. Hmm, no. Oh, come on. <sighs> Fine, yes. I did. I'm sorry. You shouldn't have doubted me. Yeah, and that was a big mistake on my part. <laughs> yeah, you're damn straight it was. <sighs> you're going to remind me of this every day, aren't you? Well, duh. It's only fitting that I should. Fine. I'll let you do it. Aw, thank you. <laughs> you know, you're one hell of a woman. Oh, hell, that's true. <laughs> I've got to ask, why didn't you tell me about your plan to get Dwight earlier? Why hide it from me? I could have been a bigger help than I turned out to be. Look, I see the way you look at me, Quinn. You see me as one big failure. So you thought, what, I should teach him a lesson by sneaking behind his back? I just wanted you to see that I could achieve something for a change. Christy, you're a multi-Grammy winning artist. Yeah, but you don't care about that. Oh, so my opinion of you matters. It's not what I'm saying. It sounds like you are. I'm not. Sure, we agree to disagree. Look, on day one, all you've seen is my ups and downs. For once, I just wanted you to see me differently. I wanted to win. I don't regret my decisions. And you know what? You shouldn't either. You should be proud of yourself. Well, thank you. I am. Hey, do you want some homemade Kentucky Fried Chicken after my interview? Sure, I'm a dab hand in the kitchen. <laughs> you know, I'll be making it. Can cook, you know. <laughs> Seriously? Chrissy smacks me on the arm. Don't be surprised. You underestimating me again? God, no. 
I would never do that. <laughs> that is the correct answer. <laughs> 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 On this cute moment, we sound out. This was the bodyguard. It was voiced by me, Justine Leah Hintz, and Alex Bowie. It was written, produced, and directed by Joao Nisita. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Bodyguard. Please leave us a review on Apple Podcast and Spotify, and be sure to subscribe to the podcast on all of your favorite podcast listening apps. Also, please share this series with your friends and family. Thank you. That Love Podcast is active on Twitter at That Love Pod and on Instagram and Facebook at That Love Podcast. <laughs>